what to say Quick turn on the TV To cover the silence As we play this game so carefully That nobody's winning And I know we both are going nowhere Going nowhere And we know we don't wanna go there Why go there? Why can't we be like you used to be? Hey guys, welcome to Surfing Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the 3DV by DHD Surfboards. I'm excited to talk about this board. We got really fun waves. This is going to be a great show. Get your favorite drink, sit back and enjoy the show. Now as we dive into the attributes of this board, I want to say this. It's a small wave, high performance shortboard and there's something very unique about it and it's in the name. It's the V in the tail. Now to the eye, it looks like a lot of the other boards we reviewed for that daily driver range, right? That two to six foot surf. And there are certain things about it that are very similar. I'd say we have a medium entry rocker. Um, I believe this is, if, if it's continuous, it's very subtle. And then it has a low exit rocker, right? So the board's carrying a lot of speed. It does have a little bit more foam up here under the chest. I noticed that when I'm laying right in the spot for paddling, it's a very good paddler. Now, as we move into the midpoint of the board, it had a lot of great speed down the line. I felt like it was loose under my feet. And when I'm talking about loose, it's like going down the line and I'm pumping and the board feels really responsive and loose to me. That's one thing. But this board, because of the V in the tail, and we'll look at that in a minute, it makes it easy for the board to go from flat to rolling on right rail on my toe side and then quickly transitioning back to my left rail. So this board is very unique in that fashion and you could definitely feel the difference. Now I want to focus a little bit on the concaves. This is what separates the 3DV from all the other boards in the small wave high performance that I've done and I'll show you why. Nothing too trick about it's running a single to a double in between the fins here. Now the double starting just in front of the fins and you can see it as I slide this back. It's a pretty aggressive single concave. We know that's going to give us lift and good speed down, down the line. And this board's very fast. And then that double concave, I talk about this all the time. It really loosens up the board. And when you couple that with some V, it makes it really easy for the board to go from flat and roll onto rail and getting on rails where you're going to find speed and more precise surfing. But one thing I find very unique about this board, it, it, it's at least unique for me, is that when I come in here and we start to look at the V, do you see this right here? That ruler's moving a bunch. Darren, Handel, Darren Hanley calls it a slight V. I would say that's moderate to medium V right there. Maybe not on like a small wave groveler that has a really wide tail. And remember, grovelers have wide tails. They want that surface area to project with a lot of speed coupled with the concaves to get it to get it going down the line fast. And then they put that V in it, even in like fish tie boards, so that way it can transition from rail to rail. Now this board, like I said, gets on rail, right rail, left rail, real easy. The transition's great. Sometimes I feel like that's a great benefit for like I would say like an intermediate that's middle intermediate all the way to pro levels. We want to get on rail as fast as we can and then we want to hold it on rail for as long as we can. And that's one thing I really liked about the 3DV. I could do that very easily and at times um, it was almost too easy. And what I mean by that is the, the DHD website claims that this is good from beginner to advanced, right? And it's a kind of like the world qualifying series groveler type model on all kinds of different waves. And I agree with that in, in portion, but a beginner would really struggle with this board's ability to go rail to rail, right? I think you're looking as a beginner for something that's a little bit more stable. So I don't recommend this board for a beginner, maybe even like the beginning stages of intermediate. I probably don't recommend this board. What, we're, what you guys are looking for is stability. This board has performance written all over it. Now 
Now another thing that's key about this, more or less the tail and the back end for this board, is that it has a low exit rocker. Now low exit rocker is good for small waves down the line speed, but sometimes when you have a board with low exit rocker, it doesn't perform as well in the pocket. Well. Darren's offset that with the V. Because of the V, it can transition from that rail, and when you put a board on rail and you can hold it on rail, there's your traction that you're looking for. And I really felt like it had the traction I liked in the two to four, maybe five feet, but beyond the five foot range when it was a, a little bit overhead, I kind of felt like the first bottom turn at the biggest section of the wave, it's like it was hard for me to settle it down on that bottom turn. So I believe that the range on this board is more like that two to four, two to five. And if you're a competitive surfer, whether you're amateur or QS, I could see this being that one to five foot board where you're looking for maximum speed, you can get it vertical in the pocket real fast, get it rail to rail real quick, this board will do that. Now we're gonna look at rail design and the tail. So the rail is relatively round. What I mean is the apex, almost like dead center, it's not domed and it's not a flat deck. It's very well proportioned. Even as he's thinned it out here and in the back, it's tapered down back here so it's ultra sensitive and you can get the board to do exactly what you want, right? And that's what I mean. When I say it's soft, I get into a small wave, let's say a two foot wave, I come off the bottom, I wanna do a turn or a snap in the pocket, but there's no lip there so I have to adjust and do a quick wrap. That is what I'm looking for a forgiving rail for. When I do that quick wrap in a flat faced wave, it's gonna offer me maximum speed and not catch or bite where I'd lose that speed. Instead, it's gonna project me through that turn and into the next one. And it felt very good like, like in that fashion. Now, as we come back into the tail, you can see it has a hip, right? Or a bump. That hip right here as it breaks, that's what something we can pivot off of. It still has good surface area, but from the hip back is where it reduces surface area, and we can not only get that pivot, something to pivot off of, but we can also get a little bit more performance off the bottom and in the pocket. The construction, when I was ordering it was, should I go EPS or PU? We're gonna be riding in the one to six foot surf. I went PU. I'm really happy that I did. The board had great feel and flex, and the construction's actually holding up really well. Now, I always talk about pressure dense, scale of one to 10, 10 meaning no pressure dense at all. I would give this one about a six, it's pretty light. I rode this board for roughly two weeks. We got great waves and the board felt great. Now I wanna talk about the fins I chose. If you follow the show, you know I've been doing the test on these beta core. This is something new Future's doing, a completely new construction. It's a full carbon um, layup and they're calling it vapor core technology. This is the AM2 template, which is the same as this fin here. We know these as the AM2 honeycomb. This fin here does not have the V2 foil that all the rest of future speed generating fins have. So I really like it. They're completely different. They also don't make the AM2 in a speed generating fin until now. Now I know they're sold out on the website, but these are coming when they come out. I highly recommend them. I really like them in that four to five foot and under. Those are, I did a lot of testing with this fin on this board and I felt like it gave me that extra spring and pop out of my turns and they're very fast. Now I always talk about, these are large, both sets. AM2s are large, it's got a wide base, so I'm maximizing drive. It's got probably the most raker sweep out of any of the fins I tested in the both Futures line and FCS. And what I found that fins that have more rake bring more balance and more control. They'll tighten up the board a little bit. And that's what I was looking for. I'm looking for control. As long as I have that speed and I can get it on rail, I wanna manipulate this board the best I can and these fins and this template help me do that. So let's look at some waves together. This wave's really lined up. Board's going real fast. I have to project the whole time and keep my speed up just to get to this turn right here. Board was there for me with the speed. Now this one, get around that guy into this section. Watch the spring, love that. This board feels so good, just connecting the turns. Here, going real fast. Hit that turn with a lot of speed and a lot of control. Now hit this nice little down carve right into that turn so the board has good flow. And not working for speed just to get these two turns right here. Now this one coming off the bottom, watch a projection here getting to that section that I want to to do a nice clean turn. 
Now on this last wave, nice bottom turn, throwing good spray. There's good speed right there, right into this wrap. The board just felt so good. Look at the quick turn, able to get back to where I wanted to be to finish it strong. We also have a special guest, Magna Martinez will be joining us. He's originally from Venezuela. He lives in Puerto Rico. He came down, we shot some video, we got him a couple boards. Hey guys, super stoked. Magna Martinez joining us for the review on the 3DV by DHD. So Mags, tell us a little bit about this board. Well, first of all, how tall are you and what's your weight? I'm super tall, but you, know, you can tell. <laughs> um, I'm stoked to be here. Thank you for having me again. Um, I'm 5'7", so, and I'm about 132, between 32 and 34, 134 pounds. Okay. What's the leaders on this board? This, uh, the leaders, never look at them, but 22.7. Okay. So usually what I write is 5'5", five five by 18 and, a, and an eighth. 18, between 18 and an eighth, 18 and a quarter, and two and an eighth. And this board right here is 18 and an eighth, but the first one I got 3VD was at 18 and a quarter. Right. And that was interesting because uh, that board felt a little, little bit different than this one. And it was just a little thicker on the tail, just a little wider, so it just, I couldn't manipulate it the way I wanted to, but then looking at the footage, it looked good, you know, and it kind of held an even bigger surf. And uh, I think that that's something interesting, you know, to notice. I think I will go more with like a little wider version on this board because this one right here is narrower and it feels just feels like it's quite like quick, you know. So you you need to be more on it. Right. So tell me a little bit about how the board felt under your feet. Yeah. Well, this one they're really loose. They're really loose. Really easy to go rail to rail and they have a, a ton of speed down the line. And once you lay it, one of the things I like about this board, once you lay on the rail, the board stays on the rail, so that's good. There's a little funkiness to it, like, and I wouldn't say it's laying it on the rail, it's kind of in between, when you're going flat in between your turns and that transition, sometimes the board feels like it wants to go its own way. And that's the only thing I noticed about this board. But I think the more I wrote it, the more I figure it out. And I kind of like, kind of ease into it and uh, end up being a really good board. I like right. it. So I noticed that, okay, so your weight is 132, 132. 134. Okay. I fluctuate, yeah. And so you kind of fit in the small fin category, right? Yeah. yeah. This is AM1, this is a medium fin. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this fin. Why are you riding a bigger fin? What does that benefit? Well, you? you know what? I think the the way I figured out a long time ago, the way I surf, I like to draw out my bottom turns and push really high off my top turns, especially the carves. And I, I realized a long time ago that smaller fins just don't cut it for me. Um, they just don't have enough hold. And I like to push a lot and like to, I think my surfing is more based on that pushing and holding my rail as long as I can. And uh, the medium fins do it for me. This is my absolute favorite fin. It's the most well-rounded. I can surf this uh, fin in any kind of conditions, especially this one. It's more for like, I keep it for smaller to like maybe just a little bit overhead. And then if the waves are bigger, I jump on the honeycomb. And even on the other board, you can see the footage. I'm riding the the Jordy the Jordy mediums, yeah. which are very similar on the template, but the the trailer fins a little bigger. It's the same size as the front ones. Right, right. Whereas in the AM1, as you know, the the trailer fins a little smaller, so it makes it a little looser. Sure, sure. So maybe if you're riding a little bit bigger wave and you want a little bit more hold, you'd ride the the Jordy. The Jordy. Yeah. 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 I go. It's like I go you know from this one to the honeycomb am1 yeah. and then if it, if the waves are a little bit bigger then i for sure go to the jordy like hands down and it, it gives you that extra hole it's really i've kind of got it down to like where it works really epic, well epic well magnum thanks for joining us on the show we're gonna have you talk over some clips maybe you can tell us about what things are going on looking at your waves but we're stoked to have you on the show thanks for having me again you guys are doing a great job Stoked. Hey. So as you can see, this is an overhead wave with plenty of face to work with, some nice carves, some top turns. And uh, that's the first war I got. So this war is 18 and a quarter. And I really liked how smooth it was and all the, the speed that carried. 
but I couldn't manipulate it as fast as this one. This one turned a little tighter. It was a little thinned out on the tail and 18 and an eighth. So an eighth less of width, which allowed me to put it in the rail back to back quicker and manipulate it a little bit more in certain sections. And then I kept just riding that war and I really liked it on the rail. It, it was nice and quick, like I said, snappy, really fast on the line. And the only thing about the board is just that it had a little unsettled uh, feeling about it, that it really wants to turn over the rail really fast. But in all said and done, it's a really good board. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the 3DV by DHD. I had a great time. I re highly recommend this board in the two to five foot range for that middle intermediate all the way to the pro level. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also share the link below and help us expand our community and find us at surfandshow.com. That's it for today. Special shout out thanks to Darren Hanley and the folks at DHD for sending this board down for review. And we were stoked to have Magna Martinez on the show. That's it for today. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye. Oh uh -huh.